want to bring in Mario Gabelli again, who's been patiently uh, standing by, you know, listening in as well uh, to that press conference. Uh, Mario Gabelli, the legendary investor, head of Gamco. Uh, and Mario, I know uh, you were talking a little bit about the UK elections, but I think, um, you know, John has a really good point uh, where there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uncertainty, not only here uh, about the government here in the UK, but really, I mean, Mario, there's uncertainty about our own government in the US. Uh, how does that, does that keep you up at night? I mean, how does that play into your, into your, yeah, no, seriously, how does Betty, that uh, it's what was just heard was that national interest should take over over party interest and that's obviously something in Washington DC should think about and obviously can't pr practice what uh, the, the Brits hopefully will be preaching. Mm. Mike, yeah. Can I ask you, it's John Dawson speaking, um, how unattractive or attractive are the UK as an investment for you whether it's the pound or the bonds or stocks. I mean, would you invest in it? Would you just stick well, completely? I, we don't look at it that way. We're looking at Rolls Royce. Sir John Rose is doing a fabulous job of running Rolls Royce, and it's a globally competitive company. And a good portion of their earnings come from selling en engines around the world, and therefore translating that. And the, the pound coming down uh, versus it was higher, 197, uh, maybe two years ago at this time. Uh, gives a comparative advantage vis-a-vis -vis, uh, dollar-based entities uh, and it also takes the earnings into uh, uh, the pound and local currency and has greater value. So not everything is negative. So therefore we look one stock at a time, one company at a time, much the way we own Cadbury and now Kraft owns it. Right, with great success so far, Mario. Um, okay, that was the opening bell. You know the markets, Mario, have been very volatile lately. I got to imagine, you know, you look for quality in the markets, but when you have what happened on Thursday, I was actually thinking about you that day. Uh, you know, what were you doing, and, and how does that volatility make it much more difficult for you to find quality? Uh, the, the, the quality is quality. Just because Mr. Market allows you to buy a, sh a share of company well below its intrinsic value doesn't change the underlying value. What it does tell you, however, is that the traders, the flash traders, the dark pools, uh, the ECNs, the ETFs are taking over the investment process and at the margin they're becoming too important. So uh, from that point of view, Betty, we have to examine is the net benefit of having in quotes this extra liquidity worth it to the system? And the answer is no. So should we put a tax on this fast trading to raise revenues for the SEC? The answer is yes. And so that investors benefit, not traders. Well, how likely do you think that that would, that would go over? I mean, how likely do you think that would happen, Mario? Well, there's clearly a great lobby that eliminated the, uh, the uptick rule, the clearly a great lobby that got rid of the specialists, uh, and so that, uh, that lobby has to put to be at rest. We saw this in 1987, Betty, when Leland O'Brien Rubenstein, LOR, was selling uh, portfolio insurance, and you saw what happened when everybody had to leave the exit. That happened again at two, to, uh, two hours and... Uh, 47 minutes after uh, on Thursday afternoon for one minute for one minute stocks went from $58 like Sam's to a, a penny. You can't have that again. Yeah. You can't get no, confidence you... back in the system for the investor. And is there any way to protect yourself from something like that, Mario? Yeah, just uh, be totally uh, looking at the intrinsic value of an enterprise, which doesn't change minute by minute the way commodities change. Uh, and look at through the daily volatility and saying, can I, should I own Coca-Cola? Should I own Pepsi-Cola? Should I own Boeing? And uh, what's it worth? And, you know, if the stock goes up or down, like Procter & Gamble went from 63 to 40 in uh, a few minutes. Wow, that's fabulous. Uh, clearly, you have to be there with a, a, a bucket and hopefully that the regulators don't then th <laughs> toss out the trades. All right. Mario, I, 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 before I leave you, I, I've got to ask you about Goldman Sachs. Uh, you know, we talked to um, Tom Marsico, a, a very well-known fund manager like yourself. Um, he's getting out of Goldman shares. Uh, and I just want to know from your point of view, I mean, not just Goldman itself, but is there still, still value in these Wall Street firms that are getting hit from the right, from the left, from the center, wherever you turn? Well, you go back to fundamentals. Fixed incomes are 64 trillion, equities are 50 trillion. There's 114 trillion. They have to be bought and sold in an efficient way. Goldman has a team that is extraordinarily creative. 
They've uh, know how to function, but also the investment bankers and New York and London and Hong Kong have to provide a function of raising capital. How do we create jobs on a global basis? New ideas have to come forth. Google, for example, 10 years ago needed capital. Who is the best at raising it? And uh, that's going to be time tested and stress tested over the next several months. But I think over time, yes, you do need facilitators to allow capital to go to its highest return. That means old businesses right. have to be starved and new businesses created. Okay, Mario, great to talk with you. Uh, have a great time here, by the way, in London. Sorry, I'm going to miss you here. Mario Gabelli of Gamco. I hope the weather, by the way, behaves better for him uh, than it has for me.